Hello, hello. All right. What's up, everybody? It's Thursday again. We're back an hour earlier than usual, so thanks for tuning in. We have the artist takeover tonight. It's going to be a chill show. We have the unique pleasure of speaking with some great creative guests tonight. Find out what is the latest in the Web3 art space, who's surviving, who's thriving. But if you want to do us a favor, click that button on the right-hand corner of your screen, drop a like, comment, retweet, so we can get more friends in here. We have a massive show tonight, stacked panel of artists, whether it's music, painting, whatever their special talent is. And we're going to ask them how they've integrated that into the Web3 world. And we're going to go over what their special sauce is, their tips for new artists and outlook for the market and many, many, many more questions. So give us a like and let's get into it. Aaron, are you excited? Not since I first bought my first CD ever, Smash Mouth, back in the day, have I been this excited. Here's the thing, guys. I'm excited about things like Bitcoin and Ethereum and DeFi, but most people are not excited by these things. You know what gets people excited? Art, music. So why not combine the two? So yeah, I'm very excited. 100%. Hey, now, I think you're an all-star. Just going to put that out there for you, Aaron. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> um, also, Aaron, you know, this space, the same space that we've put on for the past few months, just took the number one spot on Superspace's AI list. So we are the number one show on Web3's top 100 leaderboard. Pretty wild. Should I drop my ETH address if there's some sort of cash prize or something? Oh, God. Cut, cut. <laughs> Uh, but let's get into it. Um, I mean, what do you think, Aaron? Actually, do you want to just give us like a quick rundown of everything that's happening that's been happening in crypto in the past week, like a TLDR, before we get into it? Yeah, quick rundown of what's been going on in crypto. We're in the cool down period of the uh, market psychology cycle. Not as exciting as it was last month with uh, the come down off of the uh, ETF hype and approval and listing and news. Now, what's been going on with that? We're about 10 days past the approval and the EFs are positive, despite the bearish news with uh, GBTC and FTX selling GBTC. The ETFs are bringing in more money than they um, are. people are selling. And we have two funds, Fidelity and BlackRock, over 1 billion assets under management in Bitcoin. We have nine ETFs, each uh, custodying or, um, you know, each have uh, over 100 individual bitcoins in, in nine of those uh, of those ETFs. So uh, guys, things are chugging along, but uh, something I don't know a lot about is uh, certainly, you know, how music and art can interact with crypto. So I'm excited. We have some all-stars today, Tina. Oh yeah, let's get right into it. Um, I'm going to start with, I guess, the first person I saw come up. Tommy, welcome. You know, what's funny, actually, we met on a yacht in Portugal, a great board ape yacht party. That's actually where I dropped my ledger into the ocean, so. <laughs> but welcome, Tommy. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Um, great to have you. Um, tell us what's going on with you, and for the audience that might not know you, tell us who Tommy D is. Hey guys, uh, thanks so much for inviting me. And I'm, I'm, I'm. What was on the ledger? What the point? What happened? All what was on it? My crypto. <laughs> no. Oh, oh my oh god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's there. We should, we need to get one of those like submarines out. You know, like they did when they were going to find people and see if we can do. Because it was Trust like me, they right tried the, the apes were swimming, but no. <laughs> Hopefully, the IRS believes you as much as Tommy just did. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh, damn. And it was all in mirror. Mir mir yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Tommy D. I'm a music producer, songwriter, and artist. Uh, I've been in the music industry for over 30 years. I've worked with some amazing artists like Kanye and Jay Z and Beyonce and uh, all kinds of amazing people. I was in the studio this week with Liam Payne from One Direction. I was working with. Yeah the biggest band in the world and the biggest producer in the world just before Christmas. So still very much a part of the music industry, still very much doing my thing, making and, music. And what are you doing with, when in your history making music? Are you producing the beats or what? Um, so my, my history is basically production, songwriting and arranging. So it's sort of, and mixing as well. So it's really, I, I, I've done everything in music. And I think that's the important thing is this. And 
certainly from my strengths and my kind of way of, of looking at things, because I've done so many different jobs in music. Um, you know, everything from producing albums, platinum albums, producing singles, number one singles in America. I've done. Fan of I've had over seven what is up with that feedback? Can you hear that? Can, is it a clicking? Is it weird clicking? I'm yeah, it's weird clicking. Okay, is it gone now? Yeah, it's gone. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, I've, 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 you know, I've, I've had over seven billion streams, which is is mad because when you think of it like that, you don't, you're trying to sort of equate that, you're trying to put that into practice, you're trying to kind of see what that might look like. Um, so yeah, so I, I've, I've been very successful in the music industry and I've made a lot of money out of the music industry, and so, but I've seen a lot of pain, I've seen a lot of suffering, and the music industry as it stands has always been a really, it's like a total love-hate relationship. You love the people that are in it, you love the people that are making the music, but you just hate the system that music industry is because there are so many flaws in it, there are so many problems with it, and yet constantly music is so important to people. It really, you know, I always say to people, it's like people lose their shit to music, and they really do. You know, one of the few things in your life that you think about, that you absolutely go crazy, and you jump around at gigs and clubs and whatever, and you go, oh my God, this track's so good, and you share it with your friend, and, you know, this is something that you really, really deeply care about, and yet there a, seems to be a, a, a created, the music industry has created a disconnect, certainly in the last 15 years, ever since the digital revolution, of, um, of, of, of actual value and straight up value. I value something. I value this product. I value this thing. And we don't value music enough. And I think the biggest problem in the music industry is that we need to drive, well, the biggest problem is that we don't value it enough and we need to try and find ways of valuing it. As a consequence, I discovered, well, I got into blockchain back in 2015 actually because i was i have a whiskey company and i was looking at trying to find a ways of just like any whiskey. just just like any great hit song on the radio let's keep these intros to three minutes <laughs> then, I'm, then i'm done i'm good carry on the next one yeah appreciate you tommy no and anybody can uh, jump in at any time once we get going but uh yeah tina, sweet man go ahead tina yeah, thank you so much, Tommy, for that. And um, we have Ella on here as well with us. Uh, pleasure. How are you doing today, Ella? Doing good. Doing good. This is my last call of the day. So I'm excited. I can actually finish with this and make some music and watch some anime and eat some dinner. So oh, hell yeah. You already know what time it is. So I'm um, a little producer, 12-time platinum, Grammy-nominated music producer, um, Guinness Book World Record holding music producer. I've worked with, you know, a bunch of big artists. Most people probably know me from my work with Eminem. I've done a half a dozen songs with M. And I'm- Kill I did, Shot. Yeah, I did Kill Shot, where we dissed MGK. And MGK definitely owes me some flowers because we made him stop rapping and went over to, to rock and he makes fucking fire ass rock music. So. Which is needed because there's a bunch of rock stations without rock talent. So, you know, y'all welcome for MGK. That's and true. He was a shitty. He was a shitty rapper, and then he switched genres because of you know what you and Eminem did. And he is better. You know, I feel it's a better. Yeah, thing. he's a, he's a, he's a rock star. He's literally a rock star. And um, when I'm not making music, I'm also the community and partnership lead over at Yuga Labs. Um, I'm an absolute degen. I'm a crypto. Bitcoin maxi, ETH maxi, every blockchain maxi that, that matters because I feel like all of them have relevance to the space except for the ones that are vaporware. And I'm just happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Let's throw it over to the ladies. Wendy, welcome. It's great to have you today. And I know you have big ties with, you know, uh, musicians in the Web2 world. So we're excited. And are we actually going to gonna, gonna actually gonna intro, sorry to interrupt, Tina. Are we actually going to intro everybody individually? Or what are you thinking? I mean, yeah, because uh, just like 30 seconds or less, quickly go through everybody. And then we can do, you know, we'll give the topics. And as always, this space is a free-flowing conversation so everybody can jump in. But we don't usually do introductions on this space. But I feel like this one, because, you know, we have so many great artists on the panel with us, I feel like and we should give 30 seconds or less so everybody in the audience knows what your talent is. And then we can get into the conversation. But Wendy, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell there. No, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy because I love you guys so much. I adore both Tina and Aaron very much. And I'm excited. There's a lot of my really good friends that are up here talking. And I actually have my boyfriend, D with me. He's been in the music industry for how many years? 
A lot. A long, like 40, a very long time. <laughs> Hi, D. How dare you call me out like that? Hi, Tina. Um, but he's been in the game for such a long time. He has so many stories as to like how horrible the music industry is. No disrespect to the labels, but at the same time, um, yeah, I just, I've been around it my entire life. So I'm very much bullish on music NFTs that are done the proper way. And this is part of why I have the passion that I have. And Aaron, it was so funny that you mentioned Smash Mouth in the uh, very beginning, because did they record with, did they want to produce for you, I baby? Did, uh, they Kevin produced one of my records, yes. Okay, so anyways, but thanks for having us, and I'm excited to hear what a lot of the other artists have to say, and Dee will be popping in to give his opinion on things, because um, he's, he's... I'm old and cranky. You're old and cranky, baby. Yeah, Smash Mouth was my Beatles, so respect. Let's go to Sabet. Um, Sabet, I know you're loved by many in the space, um, and I know you actually have a drop right now as well on Foundation, so feel free to give it a plug. But um, yeah, tell us um, how are you doing today, and tell everybody in the space what you do real quick in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, is it me, or do, is he right No, now? please uh, reconnect with us. Sad. That's him. So that if you want to try leaving and coming back, maybe that helps sometimes. Yeah, so that just uh, uh, try again. You got it. I'll come back. Get out of your dungeon. Yeah, let's Hi, Gabe! <laughs> um, I guess we'll go to Gabe. Um, uh, I, I actually, Aaron, do you, you remember meeting Gabe? We were at NFT LA, I believe, Outer Edge LA. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but um, you actually um, made me a sketch in person, and that was an amazing experience. But for anybody who doesn't know, I believe um, you are a cubism artist, um, and I know you have a few projects in the space. You've done a lot of cool stuff, Stoics and others. So if you want to give us a quick introduction. Thank you so much. Yeah, Gabe Weiss. I've done a 5K PFP called The Stoics. I'm currently doing a weekly one-of-one -one auction on Nifty called The Anti-Stoics. Um, that you get like a hour conversation over video call with me if you if you win. Um, and this week you also get a drawn-in of the book that. The Everything Token by my friend NFT Steve, uh, who's a, a legend in the space and wrote a really good book. But um, in general, yeah, just a, a Cubist artist who's luckily found success within Web3 and just continues to, to paint and go to as many events as I possibly can. Awesome. Thank you for being here. And Violetta, my favorite. It's great to have you back. Last time we got an amazing live performance from you, actually. But we were blessed. But whoever, for the audience that wasn't here, please tell us quickly um, a little bit about yourself. Hi, Tina and Erin, Wendy, and all my artist friends on the stage. It's so cool. Thank you so much for having us all. And I, I do agree with Erin when he said... A lot of people care about crypto, but more people care about art. So if you can use art to get people into crypto, I mean, I think that's, that's the way to go. So thanks for having us. Um, I'm a music artist. Um, I've been a music artist for 10 years. I've done the whole Web2 music industry, signed to a major, signed to a publisher, signed to a management, everything. And I hated every minute of it. Um, and so I was almost about to... To, to leave music as a, as a full-time career until I found Web3, actually thanks to my mom, who knew about NFTs before I did. Um, and so she introduced... sounds cool. She is cool. She's the one, okay, like she actually told me uh, when I should sell um, before the big dump of 2022. She literally called me. She was like, uh, it's dumping tomorrow. Sell it. So she's like, she should have her own Telegram, like, alpha group, but she doesn't. Um, so anyway, I'm a full-time now Web3 music artist, I suppose you could you could say. I've done two pretty big collections in the past couple of years, and uh, yeah, it's my full-time job. So, yeah. That's it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And we got Sabet back up. Want to give it another shot? Sabet. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> Am I still oh, yes. writing? No, it's much better. Is it much better? Okay, good. Um, I'm an artist. I'm a painter. I've been here for the past three and a half years. Uh, and I'm having a time creating and uh, loving every minute of it. 
there are crazy times that are not so hot, and then there are times that are like this, but I love being here and showing up and being around friends like Violetta, Gabe, Ella, Emily, you guys, thank you so much for having me. And yes, I do have a drop right now. I'm giving away my 101s for 0.19. So if you guys want to check those out, there's 90 more left, and they come with a custom-made. <laughs> Thanks for letting me do that. You're of course, we the almost minute. made it through the whole intro without <laughs> interruptions, but, you know, close enough. Okay, um, Emily. Hi, Emily. Welcome. Um, <laughs> please tell us a little bit about yourself. It's great to have you. Get out of the dungeon, Ali. <laughs> that was funny, Gabe. I have to give it to you. That was hilarious. Um, so, man, it's nice to be here. Thanks for the intro, you guys. Thanks for having me. My name is Emily Lazar. I'm a multidisciplinary artist, um, professional touring musician, fronting the rock metal transmedia project called September Morning. It's um, a rock band, but it's based on a comic book series I wrote and published through Top Cow Image Comics with my business partner, Mark Silvestri who you might know from Batman, Witchblade, Darkness. Um, I play the title character on stage. My band plays the other characters. And we've been touring in Europe. We've been touring in the United States. We opened for Rob Zombie, Marilyn Manson, Slipknot, and others. Um, I've been signed a bunch of times, a um, couple times to majors, a couple times to independents. But it never really quite stuck and because of the music industry altogether. And that's why I'm in Web3 um, when the pandemic hit. Um, I became the first female metal hard rock musician to mint and sell an NFT on the blockchain. Been here a while. Um, I've got 1,500 collectors across nine platforms. Um, I've spoken about my accomplishments in Web3 and NFTs at Harvard, NFT NYC, NFT LA, Art Basel, East Denver. Um, yeah, that's kind of... Uh, oh, yeah, and I have, uh, I'm have. i going to be on Netflix in a documentary called NFT What the Fuck, um, which is airing on F Netflix sometime this year, and it's uh, kind of about my journey in the music business and also in Web3 and how I tie it all together. So thanks for having me. casually you just put that in. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to be on <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> I love that. That's sick. Um, we're excited to see your journey, but and also to hear your takes on the discussions today. You guys were almost there with the intro. It's Mella B. Hello, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I am Mella B, a singer, songwriter, music artist from a small, tiny little town in Ontario, Canada. I was introduced abruptly to crypto and Web3 uh, and NFTs in 2021 when uh, some of you might know him as Crypto Cobain. Now we know him as Kobe. Rated me on Twitch. So, um, yeah, that was my abrupt introduction, and I had to learn a whole lot in a very short period of time. I've been supported in this space in ways that are just remarkable and very surreal sometimes, and very grateful for it. Um, and yeah, now I'm, I'm here exploring how blockchain technology can innovate the music industry. Thank you for joining today, and okay, let's get right into it. And again, as a reminder, we like to have a genuine, you know, natural conversation, so we try to stay away from hands, and you guys can just jump in anytime you like. Um, so I guess for to start, we can start with, what's the most exciting thing in Web3 art right now? Make us excited, you guys. Make us as excited as you are. Why sh should anybody care about Web3 art? Music! <laughs> I'm just going to jump right in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here's why I'm going to say it, okay? The, the reason why it's exciting is because, and we all love and adore and are so inspired daily by digital visual artists, right? Musicians are very inspired by them. And I feel like they had a renaissance back when, you know, NFTs really became a thing. Um, artists that maybe before Web3 were just illustrators, you know, maybe they were doing paid gigs, but they weren't necessarily seen as art, artists worth collecting from and putting in museums and galleries. And because you could track provenance with the blockchain, um, the value was finally came to the surface and they had a renaissance, right? It was a revolution for digital art. And I feel like that hasn't happened with music yet because it's got such a big presence, of course, in Web2 and Spotify, etc. So it's still like a slower transition. And Ila recently said it's going to probably take a couple of cycles. And I really liked what he said there. Um, it's not so immediate, but that boom hasn't happened yet. And I really do 
uh, see it happening very, very soon. So the same thing that will ha- that happen with digital art will happen with music, and I, you know, I, I would really bet on that. So. Yeah. Just, to, just to piggyback off what Violetta was saying, and I totally agree with everything you, you said and what Ella said, I think that the, the biggest hurdle is the psychological, like, sort of hurdle for music, because, um, you know, we've been conditioned to devalue music over the past, like Tommy was saying, so many years, and it's mostly just because of the way that we consume music is so easy now, and so, um, you know, we, like, usually when we can consume things on an easy level, we don't want to pay so much for them so it becomes this like weird psychological pull and um so that's been happening so that music has been devalued to this you know 0.003 cents per stream sort of situation we got going along on all like most of these streaming platforms and over here um the psychological value of music in it in placed on this like digital asset placed in a financial sort of uh, situation, it, it kind of like uh, changes everything. And, and we've seen it change, like for us musicians that have been over here, we have seen, you know, our music be valued at a certain level. We've seen, you know, this niche market um, really grow us to a certain point, whereas, you know, being one amongst the masses just dilutes everything so, so critically, you know. So I think that if we can get over that psychological barrier that has been kind of like making everything nosedive in music, um, and we are starting to do that over here, then we can really kind of like move the needle, you know, and make this, and especially as we onboard, as long as we onboard keeping that psychological riff like at bay and, and bringing people into a new way of thinking about music as a valued asset, then I think that, you know, we got something really good over here. Kind of to go off of what you're saying, Emily, is like D and I, we always have this conversation all the time, like uh, talking about his career and all the different things that he's done, but really like the the community aspect. And I think part of the problems that we see with the whole entire like music industry is that people are so used to pirating music for free and not paying for it, which I totally understand because, it, you know, it can get expensive at times, especially since you're interested in so many different artists or so many different genres. But at the same time, like I feel like people forget that there's actual human uh, beings. Uh, oh my God, there's a so- skunk. Oh yeah. my god. I'm sorry. I live I live next to like a bunch of wildlife. But any but anyways, I just, oh just shut the door, please. And I lost my train of I'm so excited. Oh my god. This is, this is I, the funniest thing I've ever heard. This is, this is literally what this is literally when you date a music man who is also a child. But anyways, we talk about people not a pre I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> We talk about people not... Photo, a- photo, it didn't happen. I can't take a photo because he's literally chasing the skunk away from the door because we have the sliding glass open. But we talk a lot about like people not really necessarily appreciating artists and appreciating that aspect of it and they want they want them wanting things for free, which absolutely sucks because there's people... Did you just left it? I, I, I gotta go, guys. <laughs> Sorry. I have a question for Violetta, Emily, maybe Mela could answer this. Anybody could answer, but like, how are... Like you're using, you know, Web3 and NFTs today. How are you and like other musicians and artists um, like using them? Is it like digital collectibles where like merchandise and like um, they get like maybe token gated perks? Is is that how like you and most musicians are using it today or or is there something else? Yeah, I think I think most uh, musicians basically sell their music through NFTs, right? Like they create collections, often pair them with art like Emily did, right? She has a comic and I worked with my dad. He's a Disney illustrator as well, comic um, illustrator. So we did something together and a a few different things. So, and then you tie into a lot of utilities. I know Emily does that a lot as well. Like, um, and also what Gabe was saying earlier, you know, people that collect his art get a one-on-one call with him. All those kinds of things are, I think, integral part of collecting music as art because ultimately that's why a lot of people collect because they want a relationship with the artist so and are you guys and like people selling the actual like snippets or full songs as an nft and like open sea or is it like uh other pictures for collectibles full songs i mean oh, go ahead, I mean. 
Yeah, no, I just wanted to tap in on like what you were saying with the utility aspect. So, so we're a touring rock band, right? So, I mean, I'm on the road right now, actually. So like, um, we just finished a tour and I'm in the studio. So like, like how we do it is we have, you know, it's a full song, like Violetta was saying, and we have our cover, you know, our, I guess our quote unquote album artwork, if you may, um, you know, as our cover art. And then the song is somewhat attached to that. Um, you can stream it, you know, through uh, whatever platform that you're, you know, buying this thing from. Um, but for us, it's like if you come to our show and you have your wallet and you show us, hey, I have this NFT from Emily, um, you get into our VIP meet and greets for free. And that's a hundred dollar value. So if you're paying a hundred dollars for your NFT, you just got a free meet and greet ticket and it doesn't expire and you can use it one per tour. So like, I mean, this is something that is ongoing for us. Um, we just want people to, we want to translate, we want to move our web three audience to IRL because I feel like once they see us live and once they get the whole scope of this project, because it's not just a band, it's like this whole transmedia world building, whatever, whatever the hell I'm doing over here project then, you know, we really tie them into the world. We really get them, you know, then they become our fans for life. And that is my main goal in anything that I do, whether it's NFTs, putting out music, putting out comic books, putting out merch, putting out t-shirts, whatever it is, I want to tie them into the world so they become our fan for life. And um, NFTs is just one way to do that and, and doing that utility where you do that. And, you know, like with Gabe, like how he's, how he's doing that, like I was doing that with my pixie girls, like for the past couple of years, I did pixie girl paintings that were NFTs, put them online. If you bought one, you get a Skype call with me. It was like, I, that, that was a way to connect with my fans. And I think that FaceTime, which Gabe is doing and Gabe is really, really good IRL, like FaceTime with people, like drawing things for them, talking to them, and he engages with people. They become fans for life. I mean, that's really what we're looking to do here. It's not just, you know, digital is one source of it, but it's really a niche market sort of like um, way of, of collecting people um, so that they become, they become attached to you as well as attached to your art. And that there's a whole, there's a whole art in doing that in itself, right? Um, so that's just kind of how we work it. And, uh, sorry to blow you up there, Gabe, but I love Gabe and I've been Gabe's friend for a while here and I've watched him in spaces and in IRL meets and he's amazing. He is amazing. He's the fucking truth. I wanted to, um, to jump in because the thing that I feel that's most powerful about this space is that, you know, Kevin Kelly has a thousand true fans in this space. All you need is a hundred true fans. And you can actually make a real living versus a thousand true fans. And you can scale it from there. But if you have that core hundred people that listen to your music and love your art and love your vision and your story. Because that's the thing about this space is that you, you fall in love with the artist first. You fall in love with the person's story first. And I that, that think that's what separates music NFTs from a lot of the grifty, shilly bullshit is that these are actual human beings that have a human side of their of of their art they have the story they have their struggle and you can relate to that because you may have been that person who was getting downloaded music for free and you're like damn i didn't know that it affected people like that until you hear an artist like violetta like yo like I, you know i went through this horrible shit and i wasn't even i almost gave up on my passion then you hear her saying you're like shit i almost ruined that so it it, it actually it make it brings the human side to the story and the thing that i'm most excited about currently in in web3 is that it's about to be another cycle you know things are you know i jumped in with crypto first and i understand the cycles and i know it's about to get bullish and when people make gains in crypto it flows into nfts that's just how it goes so when people you just you're definitely green to this space there's not going to be one of those without a crypto bull market first because crypto bros spend their money on nfts and digital art because that's what you collect when you're somebody who made your money on crypto you you keep it in eth and you're like okay this is going sideways let me grab some artwork and i feel like the next cycle of people that come in here they're going to be really excited to meet to get to do more than just collect for denses and more than just collect punks or apes they're going to collect music 
they're going to collect photography again. I remember when photography NFTs were a thing, and then all of a sudden those all those guys disappeared. So I'm ready for a whole new round of people to enter the space because I think there's going to be new entrants that flip all this shit on their head. And uh, yeah, I would actually love to know more about you know who do you think is going to lead this cycle? Who's inspiring me? inspiring you in the cycle you know because obviously like we we have every cycle i feel like has kind of its leaders and do you think maybe if is it from a previous cycle are they still leading for you what do you think who's inspiring you um i really on the crypt on like the nft side of things i think you know punks are going to do great things i think apes are going to do great things i think pudgy's going to do great things um on the music side of things you know violetta Josh Savage, um, Sammy's dope. I got a, a artist named Kent Jones who was just signed to DJ Khaled who's about to enter this space. So the thing that really excites me, I'm not gonna front, is the people that aren't even here yet. That's what's gonna excite me. And they're gonna come in and fuck up everybody that's doing PFP projects, digital art. They're gonna give all of us a run for their money and that's what excites me because I don't think it's cool just to be the same people over and over. That's, that's, that doesn't scale. That doesn't even excite me at all. There's going to be people who brand new, who who didn't even know this thing existed, and they're going to come in and do come in and do it a new way because they don't know how anybody else did it before. Just like anything else, I always like the new shit. People with brand new, fresh ideas that we can all maybe pull from and get inspired by. Yeah, I, can I jump in on this because I, I think Ella's making a really good point. I mean, I think what attracted you know. What attracted me to blockchain in the first place back in 2015 was the technology, not so much the, oh, I might be able to flip this and make some money kind of vibe. Um, you know, I, I'm really interested in how this technology c brings freedom to people on so many different levels. One of the, you, to go back to your original question earlier on about like, what's exciting me about this space, it's, it's, bring, it's allowing artists to be creatively freedom, free because they are enabled to embrace this technology and use it in different new and exciting ways that go back to the very essence of what it means to be creative, what it, and the essence of what it means to be a musician or an artist or a filmmaker or whatever, which is to just be free to create without kind of restrictions and kind of gatekeepers and all these kind of things. And that, particularly in the music industry, you know, it's become incredibly data driven. It's all about the algorithm. It's all about fitting into that, that demographic, that genre, you know, that kind of, you know, got to get on this playlist, got to get on that tweet, got to get on that Twitter, uh, that TikTok feed, you know, it's so data driven. Whereas so many people I know in this space have come in and gone, you mean I can just make whatever I like? You mean, I've just, and for me personally, I've really fallen back into music, like in a big way, you know, it was becoming, you know, it had become, and, 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 you know, Yellow knows what it's like, because when you're working all the time on a really top level, it's really, really, it's like the, the pressure's right, immense, right? But actually, when you just can make music, it's just like, ah, oh, this is what it feels like when I first started. Let and me I ask think, you something, Tommy. Let me ask yeah, you, mate. is, is yes. what was described by Violetta and Emily and Mella, like how they are using um, NFTs and Web3 integrating into their art and their business. Is that what you see with your artists as well? Is that, are they, is that what artists are doing as far as you know? Well, I mean, this is a great question because I think the fundamental answer to that is, is it every, you can do whatever you want. And that's the beauty of it. Yes, I think, you know, Violet has done one thing, Sammy's done something else, but Ella does something else, you know, sound, do one type of way of doing things, open sea, do another. You know, everybody kind of has their own little thing, but you can, you can pick a, a thing. I did a project back in 22 called uh, Graffiti Sixes Revolution, which is a, uh, um, a collaboration I did with a guy called Jamie Scott, and we've been working together since 2008. And it was a really, really, really comprehensive uh, project. It was completely, 3,030, completely unique unique combinations of music and art that was totally been every single nft was completely different to a to an l it's totally unique now that i couldn't have done that without blockchain technology you know there was rarity values in there there's rarity values in the stems of the music not just the stems of the of the art and i i was really inspired by blockchain technology to do something and use this technology in a new and exciting way and i think that for me has always been a driving force so anybody that's coming into this space it's like start with the technology and understand what the technology can do understand about connectivity with blockchain around tokenization around creating currencies around what you do 
values around what you do, understand about blockchain security, transparency, so you can see, understand things like rarity values and PFPs, all of this kind of stuff. And then, of course, you know, understanding that a, that a unique one of one has more value than, say, an addition. You know, you have to understand what the technology can do. But then you marry this all up with what's happening in AI, which I'm also really really deep across and that's when shit starts getting really really exciting because then you can start looking at ways that you could actually revolutionize the music industry as a system of of actually funding artists and that's what i think is really really super exciting so yeah i i I've, i have a, a company called token tracks we I founded back in 2020 it's a music nft uh company it's a music company and what we do is we build music we build web3 tech uh, around blockchain and ai and and uh, DeFi and and nfts specifically for the in music industry so it doesn't matter whether you're an artist or a label or a publishing company or a venue or a, a charity whatever we will build you the technology that you need to start you on this journey of this web3 journey and as i said the beauty of that is it's completely open what do you want to do that's the question what do you want to do what do you want to build what's the key to do it how do you want to get from a to b because music is the same as it's always been it's about people who create music people who share music and people that f that, that find music and love it well, i call them the three c's creators curators and and collectors it is about connecting those people up in a much more efficient way in a way that's really really going to get this next stage of the internet is going to kick it into touch I kind of wanted to, to, to speak on what Illa was talking about, how the crypto bros are going to end up dumping money into stuff. Um, music is like when you talk about a music NFT, that's essentially a hard asset because it's not just like a song. OK, a lot of and I'm sure that Illa and Emily and Valletta and a lot of the other Armella, like a lot of the other artists, artists up here can explain like in D if you want to explain what goes. No. OK, what goes into you're busy with the skunk, um, what actually goes into a song it's like merchandising and licensing and royalties and all these different aspects so essentially if you get in early enough on purchasing a music nft and that artist ends up exploding and you get a designated amount of the royalties or whatever aspect it is via smart contracts you can actually do immensely well later on and that's another thing that we need to remember music and art those are even though people like to classify music songs or like a single as different than an art piece it's it's essentially a hard asset and a lot of people don't understand that on the back end a lot of these people like a, there's um, one of my old mentors from way back when what he used to do is he would buy and sell um, licensing rights to a lot of the Marvel movies and a lot of the Disney movies and they would wait for them to expire or wait when they were able to purchase them and they would buy them and then they would piece them out but that's essentially the same exact thing as a music NFT and even though people like to devalue music um, that's exactly what it is. And you guys are getting all of your power back by just simply by putting your song or a portion of your song or whatever that may be as a music NFT. I just wanted to jump in really, really quick to follow uh, what Wendy just said um, in terms of, you know, the hard asset. I, I And, you know, we always have to try and think that also when, when you start putting value on something, like we're starting to put value on music, obviously people are going to try, you know, and speculate on it, um, which I, I think in a way is, is a good thing. A lot of musicians and artists in general are kind of scared of that, right? No, I don't want people to speculate on my art, but when there's a little speculation, it, it can be good, right? Because people see value in it. And we've just hit, we've just passed a million dollars in, in trading for my one, my first album in web three actually just a couple of days ago so that's definitely and i don't offer royalties or you know anything like that but but still you can do it people are trading music like art which is a revolution in my opinion do you think it's going to this maybe even for illa because illa like the question is do you think it's like this adoption for artists is going to come from the top down or from the bottom up because illa Maybe, like, if I were to say, Ila, how come you're not, like, incorporating, like, music NFTs? I would think the obvious answer would be because, you know, you're very successful. You, it would just be a pain point working with the artists you use. Like, do you guys think it's going to come up from, like, the top down or, or from the bottom up? That's, that's the question. Um, I actually did a music NFT. It was called, it's called Who Who's Treehouse. And that's how I know it's, it's so early is because, you know, I try to do something. I should have followed spotty's rule i should have did a thousand nfts instead i did seven thousand nfts and it didn't mint out and in this space people are like oh that's a failure 
And they're like, oh, why don't you close the mint? And I'm like, well, listen, I don't, I don't close the mint because my music is not to be taken lightly. You know, <laughs> I've sold, I've got billions of streams and sold tens of millions of records. So when people do realize that music NFTs matter, there's going to be a lot of artists that come in here and need, need beats. And they're going to find my beats that are there for a hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars, fifty dollars. So it makes, I'm not one of those people who are like, oh, well, I didn't sell out, so it's not a success. I don't look at it like that. I'm looking at it as, here's my gift back to the music world. These are my beats. There's a hundred of them. People can take them and write a song to them. And if you write a dope song, you, uh, you send it to me in an email or in my Discord, and I'll either put it out with you or I'll send it to my publisher or try to get it placed. So that's the utility I, I gave back. And that's I big. feel like that's big. Yeah, I feel that it's important to f to always try to give back. And through that through that project, I found people like Mr. Darius, who's down in the crowd. I found you know I've done some a great some great songs with with Lisa Ray that she's about to drop. So congratulations to her. She just had a baby. So as soon as you know she gets gets back situated in the space, she'll be dropping that. And then I worked with Josh Savage. He came to Miami and I booked studio time, and we got a, his next single. And my next single I'll be putting out all through this music NFT project. So I found great artists. I've done great songs. I got all these songs mixed by Rick Ross's engineer, Justin Bieber's engineer, people who have a bunch of Grammys. And that's just me giving back. So I feel like it's super important that we realize the power of this space and we're, we're not short sighted. That's why I said that the other day on, on the space with, with Violetta and K Money is that we're just super early. We're beyond early, you know what I'm saying? And it'll take a few cycles before people really understand what this is. So it's just, it just, all that matters is that people are here and we have people that are championing music NFTs and eventually it'll take off and I'm here for it. Yeah, for just to just to kind of add to what Ella just said, I think that one thing that the space lacks that I don't like in the space is the lack of patience in the space. And as an artist, especially as a musician, musicians take time to develop. Like they're, you know, you, you don't just put them in an easy bake oven and five minutes later, they're going to pop out like a cake. Like that's just, that's not how it works over here. It's not like a PFP project that you put on sale. It sells out in two minutes. Like it's, it, musicians are different. And, and could you imagine, you know, having like a Nirvana or something and then they drop an NFT and then like a couple years later they become Nirvana and they're like huge or Coldplay or like any of those like bands that muse like five finger death punch avenge sevenfold who did drop an nft but like but you know these bands that like did it before they got really really big so for me it's kind of like it's exciting to be able to buy a collectible from a musician because you're like i don't want to say you're betting on it but you're kind of betting on hey they're gonna blow up like let's let's see them work but besides betting on them blowing up you're you're like i'm gonna be here for the journey and that right there is the exciting part for me and for a lot of my fans. They want to like, they, they're watching us. They're like, oh, you're going on. Oh, you just got booked with Power Man. Oh, you just got booked with this band. Oh, you just got, you know, they're watching us escalate in, in our career. And that's exciting for them. And to be on that journey and have not, and I hate using the term investment because there's no investment here, you know, not financial advice, but to be invested with in that artist's career in, in this way, in this new digital age, in this new digital way is very, very exciting. You're on board. You're right there with them. You're like in this niche crew. You're the insiders. And so the more that you can do that, and I'm, I'm, you know, I work a lot with Gala Music. I'm on that platform. I've sold, you know, out seven of my um, nine drops over there. Um, and I keep on dropping over there. And I have a really strong community over there. And I love the people over there. And what they're doing with streaming and what they're doing with their drops and, like, what they're trying to do to push the industry forward is is imperative for, for artist development because it's allowing us and it has has allowed us in the past year to double our, our Spotify numbers, to like to um, manifest better tours, to do all this sort of stuff that so everything is translating from the web three world to the web two world. So so when people are like, oh you just you know it's web three and it it's just you know music is just web web three music is just web three music and it doesn't cross over. I'm the perfect petri dish of it crossing over i've done it i keep continue to do it we're going back on tour for another two months we might just do a 
something really, really big in another country in about two months. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot going on. So if you're, you know, c coming here and you're buying into like one of my NFT projects, you're on board, you're in my niche crowd. You're like, you're in the front line. You're, you're part of my band at that point. And so I think that's a really exciting point to make. I want to be part of your band. I love I that. And I think it's going to So, Ben, I was actually going to go to you next, so go ahead. No, 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 I was saying I want to be on uh, on stage with Emily Painting while she sings. I want, I want to do that. We have to do that. We have to do that. That has to that's, happen. We got to do that. If you do, like, death metal, are you going to paint a death metal painting? <laughs> oh, dude, that would be amazing. Of course, Hell yeah, I'll do be some stalls. Metal. Maybe some skulls, yes. some new girls, you know. Let, yes, let's go. new girls and skulls. To let's yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's, the, that's the secret to a bear market, you know, boobies and skulls. So, let's go. I'm here for it. <laughs> you and me, <laughs> but, uh, babe, you and me. <laughs> nah, and I've had, a, I've had a blast, you know, with music and uh, musicians. I've had a blast doing a lot of collaborations. We actually have an unreleased uh, collaboration with Illa. Illa, whenever you're ready, bro. Let's go. Oh, really? I was just going to say, man, let's drop that thing, man. Like, let's do it. Oh. You ready? And and I got to do one with Gabe, too, man. I feel like yeah. that's going to be that's going to be like a dope meta because oh, yeah. the first thing that 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 people get excited about before any PFPs or anything goes off, it's it's the original digital artist. Like even on Solana right now, that rubber project that dropped yesterday is gas. And that shit like that is what I love to see. What is man. that? What is that? Just a PFP project? No, 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 no. It's it's art. It's an art project. A Solana art project. It's only a thousand pieces. I know I'm. I don't own any, so I'm not shilling. It's just dope, you know. Like, and I feel like Solana gets a bad rap. I mean, it's it's deserved. They they just they just they cheat everything. But now they're gonna see the value of a, a low supply, amazing art. And I feel like all artists, Gabe's and and and, so, and Sabet, y'all should go over there and just drop some shit because, you know, don't don't you know everything don't have to be on one chain. It should be just no, spread the art everywhere. I got three real. pieces there. Ella, if you ever want to check it out, I just posted one. It's called One Soul, and it's for oh, it, actually right. it's called Soul One for One Soul. <laughs> so check it out. It's a very limited minimum uh, piece. It's on my feed. But yeah, I think Soul. Is great. I think Tezos is great. I think ETH is great. I don't have a problem with any of them because I feel like when you go from chain to chain, you're actually visiting different countries with different people running it, and uh, it's always amazing to meet new, you know, people who love that chain. And there's a reason for it for each one. So uh, I'm all game putting art on all of it, and it's a blessing to be seen uh, with, uh, you know, throughout uh, all different chains and worlds. But yeah, music collaborations and Ella, let me, let's set a date, man. I love guys, that. Uh, and you guys actually brought us into the next topic of conversation. We really want to know, you know, what metrics do you look at when you're actually looking into where, you know, finding a home for your art, for newer artists, maybe. Like you said, it's better to kind of experiment on different blockchains. But is there something that would keep you away kind of from creating maybe on a chain? And, uh, of course, if you want to give us another hint for your upcoming drop, we would love to hear. And make sure you follow these guys, because when this drops, you're going to want to be following them so you can be the first to ape into the music. I think for me, it's, you know, whenever I go to a new chain, it's always difficult finding, you know, I have to start and have the energy um, to establish an authentic, um, you know, authentic thing with the new audience and new uh, community, right? And I want it to be authentic. If I don't have the energy or the time or bandwidth to build relationships with people who are in that space, then I won't make that move. So right now, I'm about to make a pretty, uh, you know, pretty big move into ordinals, and um, you know, with probably about two or three really limited, you know, beautiful projects that are that I've done maybe on ETH before, but I'm going to do them on ordinals. Uh, but I wasn't going to. I've been asked probably for the past year and a half to go to ordinals. I just didn't feel like I had the ability to create those relationships until now. So now I'm working with, uh, you know, this new friend of mine, Turhan or uh, Troy. A lot of people probably know him in that in, in that world, and he's kind of ushering me in and getting me to get to know people and make friends and make real relationships before I get into minting anything on that platform. So for me, it's about. 
building those authentic relationships and friendships before I want to be on any platform. That's the most important thing for me. Guys, let me jump in real quick. First of all, thank you so much to all our speakers. This uh, hour has flown by so fast. Make sure you're giving Illa a follow. Make sure you're giving Tommy, Mela, Emily, Violetta a follow. Hell, even give Wendy a follow. You know, she saved herself from that skunk. Um, and, and of course, Gabe and Sabat and, and Action and everybody. But, you know, I, I guess like final, trying to think of like final thoughts so the audience can say, take something home, either in whatever order you want to do, you know, give your final thoughts on this industry, maybe a, you know, prediction where you see uh, this space going in the next one to two years. Like if you would have told me in 2020 that pictures um, on the blockchain are going to blow up and everybody's going to be paying high prices for them, I would have been like, okay, yeah, sure, buddy. You know, but it seems so simple and obvious now. So maybe you have a simple prediction like that, or even just advice for somebody who wants to get where you are or do what you do. You know, this final thoughts is surely running the spectrum, but uh, Melody, you've had your hand up forever. You want to start or? Sure. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, just one thing that I wanted to say um, that I'm very excited about, and I think it's going to really, really change the way that artists and musicians are able to mon monetize their um, their work, is the gamification aspect of releasing NFTs. Um, you know, like previous to my entrance into this crazy world of Web3, I was just a musician sitting on, you know, Twitch, begging people to listen to me, right? Like, oh, please just stay. I'll play you a song. Like, it, it felt so impersonal and it felt like you're just like singing at a screen and like hoping people will sit and listen and really absorb your mu music. And then hopefully they'll go and stream your music elsewhere and hopefully that'll turn into something else. And it's all about the funnel, right? But the exciting part about this for me is... I can now give back to the people that support me and I know who those people people are, right? Like if someone holds 20 of my NFTs, they jump up to platinum in the Melaverse and they get to reap the rewards of that, right? So, and I don't have to work too hard to make that happen. I can still have time to, to make music and to record and shoot videos and do photo shoots and do all the stuff that I have to do as an artist and all of those people are kind of like there with me throughout the journey. So yeah, that's what I'm excited for. Um, you know, making this more uh, gamified and more fun and more personal rather than me just kind of sitting in front of a camera and hoping people like my music. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Let's go to Gabe. I think... I think one thing that sticks out to me is not being afraid to pivot and maybe pivoting quicker than what feels natural. Like there, there aren't that many experts here. I, I would have to go as far as to say there are no experts here. Like it's such a burgeoning industry. So, I mean, there's OGs like that know what they're talking about, but in in six months, if you told me 90% of NFTs were sold on Solana or Avalanche or, or Ordinals, like, that wouldn't be that shocking. So I think, like, not being afraid to pay attention and then switch and pivot really quickly, I think, is probably the best advice I can give other artists. Here, I'll jump in real quick, and my music background is very limited in comparison to everybody else. Like, I love music. If you watch any of my videos, you're going to see guitars, you're going to see He keys, doesn't even go see... here. I know, right, exactly. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got that. Um, I do watch those movies. I do love, uh... and let's not get into that. Anyway, um, my biggest reason for coming here and being here is because I am, like, trying to sell... A like an artist, a recording artist on Web3. I mean, they're going to be touring with Third Eye Blind and Yellow Card, and I'm like, guys, you got to get into Web3. This is your time. And hearing from all of you is just so exciting that it's not dying. Quite the contrary. It's growing. It's, 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 it's here. It's now. And if you can give me a tidbit as far as why Web3 makes sense for you in this whole ordeal... Like, I would love to hear it because, I mean, I've done front of house sound for a lot of big people. Like, I've done a lot of different things that I don't put on my resume, but I, I live and breathe music every single day. 
That was cute action. Thank you. And Tommy, I, I know we've kept you up so long. Thank you so much for staying up. I know it's pretty late there. Oh, I got to stay up to talk. do what I love and talk to my friends. Oh, man. No, thanks, Tommy. Please go. Aaron, you're such a big baby. <laughs> No, it's good. It's good. I'm all good. Um, and this has been a great conversation and it's great to see so many of my, my Web3 family and friends here. Um, I think the main thing is, you know, the, the, I said it earlier on, don't be, exper don't be, don't be scared to experiment with, lo with this technology. Don't just sort of, just because other people are doing something doesn't mean you have to do it. You try, try things out. This technology is incredible. I personally have got a I'm really interested to know what this technology, how this, the connectivity of this technology will, will, will pan out. Where we are at now, you know, if you look at tech adoption throughout the ages, it's never the place that you, you end up with. You know, social media was, it didn't start the way it did. The internet didn't start the way it is. So where we're at with Web3 now is probably not the way it will be in 10 years time with, with NFTs because the technology will move along, it will move faster. But if you take a step backwards and just think about the connectivity of blockchain, why that is so, more, so much more powerful than an email and a credit card, which is the way we connect up today. Um, the connectivity of blockchain is where we're heading. Now, as a consequence, everything that you do should be based around that and keep that at your heart. But if you, are, if you haven't done an NFT before, you haven't done a music NFT before, then just go and do it. You know, there are many platforms that you can go out and do it and just have it. But also the most important thing I think is, you know, uh, mobile phones have shown us and laptops have shown us that nobody is a musician anymore. No one's a photographer anymore. No one's a filmmaker. We do everything. You're a multimedia creative artist. And um, why, as, a cre as, a, as an amazing painter, why wouldn't you have music in your NFTs? If you're a filmmaker, why wouldn't you have music in your NFTs? So music is a fundamental part of our life. It's a fundamental thing that we all love. It, it bring music in. If you don't make music yourself, partner up with so many brilliant music artists that are out there and do something really, really creative with them because the deeper the art, the more incredible the art, the more and more powerful it will be. Boom. Appreciate that, man. And thank you for staying up with us. I was just joking around earlier. Just joking around. Uh, Violetta. I mean, only if they have closing things to say. No oh, questions. yeah. No, I'm sorry. I definitely do. Yeah. Like I said, I really appreciate you guys uh, spotlighting art. Um, it's not something that I take for granted, especially especially music. Having almost like a majority of the artists up here on the stage being music involved is definitely not something you usually see. And I do appreciate it. We do work really, really hard. And um, yeah, I just think uh, it's going to be one of the next big things is gonna be music mark my words because these people have been working really 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 hard and relentlessly so uh and we're getting pretty impatient so we will make it happen thank you so much well unless anybody else wants to jump in i just want to say thank you again um as you know art was my original passion back in the day you know i was pursuing acting and uh you know now i do crypto and youtube full-time still get to you know do that creativity with youtube and and stuff like this but uh you know i love music and art and i uh, always have so much respect for people who are um you know doing it and uh yeah, just thank you, everybody. Anybody else want to jump in? Tina, what's your final thoughts? Emily, I think she's trying to get in. Oh, yeah, of course. Just, just one thing real quick, you guys. When onboarding, when onboarding, drop the NFT shit. Like, normies don't know these these terms. Just say digital collectible. Just say collectible. Like, do you want to collect some music with me? Here, look at this. Do you want to help an artist make more than 0 0.003 cents for the music that they spent thousands of dollars making? Here, collect this. Here, stream on this platform instead of Spotify. You can sign up with Google. You can sign up with Facebook. You can sign up with whatever. The f you can sign up easy. You don't have to go through a billion wallet things and just stream and still earn 
from being a fan. That's what you can do on Gala. You can do it on other platforms. There's lots of things going on over here that can be translated to normies without using the lingo. We've got to take down the gatekeeper BS, even on our side, guys. And we've got to start nor like normalizing lingo because we're never going to get people over here if we keep talking in these code words. It's like it's it's too gatekeepery. Hey, so that's just Emily. my... Yeah. <laughs> Emily, could we could we bring more people in if you switched from death metal to like pop? I mean, you want to bring in the death metal people and there's a lot of death metal people there. <laughs> so, I don't get know. Him. I, I mean, get him. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I love I I like my coffee black Please. just like I'm like my metal. So, you know, there's that. But um <laughs> that's an MSI lyric. I had to throw it in there. It was appropriate. But um but you know, I mean, look, there's like lots of different music genres out there. Lot, like there's just lots of different blockchains out there. You know, not one is better than the other. It's all preference and it's all taste. But yeah, that's just my, uh, that's my two cents there. Thanks for having me. I'm so thrilled you guys are like participating in the ecosystem and bringing artists like with this big platform that you have to speak, especially musicians. We really appreciate it. Wendy, I saw a little hand go up, which is very unlike you, but <laughs> I know. Good point. No, Dee was telling Aaron that if no. he wants a if he wants a smash smash mouth autograph, he can get that for him. Um, but no, I love to see all different types of music genres on um, utilizing NFTs. I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, you guys, if you're if you're somebody who's listening to this and you're thinking about creating, just put your shit on there. Just make your shit as a digital collectible and NFT. Like you never know what's going to happen. You never know who's going to see you. That's how artists. Like, how do you guys think artists used to get discovered? Like way back when, before there was social media, they would just go out, they would show up, they would play, and you know people would get deals. But now you actually have the power to make people your like Tommy would pay off like the radio DJs and get the songs on there. Hey, I still do. That's what we do in the music business. We just pay everybody. <laughs> hey, I just want to, can I, can I make one quick, quick point? Can I make one, one quick point? Sorry. Which is this, the NFT space is not a replacement for the rest of the music industry. Okay. Not yet. Okay. You still have to, in the point that you still have to work your socks off. Everybody on this stage right here works absolutely 24 seven on pushing their music in as many different formats as possible. This is a new way of connecting with your super fans with that little, you know, one to 3% who are going to go that much, so much further for you. So don't think that you can just put any old shit on the blockchain and people will buy it. It won't happen. You've got to work your socks off. And even, and, and in fact, I would argue even more so because you've got to do all that other stuff. You've got to do all the social media and all the touring and all that kind of stuff, as well as looking after your community and making sure that your community, those super fans are really, really feel precious and really, really feel valued. I want to jump in and say, put God first, put your blinders on, stay humble, stay hungry. Remember that when you have a vision, that's not for everybody to see. That's why they call it a vision. It's literally for you to see and for you to execute and stay, stay, stay grounded. If you got to work a nine to five until you get your big break, do that. Don't think that nobody, that, that nobody owes you a damn thing because they don't. You owe yourself everything and yeah, stay humble and and work your ass off. You'll make it. Thank you, everybody. I think that was it. Um, yeah, thank you. Go ahead, Tina. Wrap it up. Aaron. No, no. Don't be shy. Hey, you said we didn't have to raise our hand. Uh, no, end things, please. People want to eat dinner. <laughs> Sounds good. This was an awesome creator chat, you guys. Huge thanks to our speakers. Give them a follow. Give Altcoin Daily a follow. Whoever you like that you listen to, give them a follow. This was the first space that we held actually for creators and artists in the space. And we, you know, spend a lot of time on general topics. I would love to do this more, kind of put it in our, you know, regular scheduling so we can really tackle maybe more niche topics and struggles and challenges that maybe artists might be facing right now. Um, so thank you so much so much to everybody who contributed Mella, to the discussion. Mella, Emily, Ma Mella, Emily, uh, or Violet, if you're, you're still Anybody have a guitar they want to play us out? No, no pressure? I could. I have a guitar on me. Oh, let me, oh, let me, let me chime awesome. in. Thank God. I was trying to talk the whole time, and uh, I'm on my Windows app, and it didn't work. So I have finally had to get my, Jesus, iPhone. Anyways, um, just kind of want to say my what's up Darius? what's up you want to say my two words Darius I see you while Darius left um so look guys 
this is uh, something that's going to be pretty epic because it's happening. Web 2 artists are getting pissed off and still are very kind of some are kind of vocal about it, about these streaming bot farms that are pushing these other plants all the way up. So guess what? They're going to have to find a solution. Guess where we are? We are the solution. So, you know, just like those OG Bitcoiners, they knew it back in 2011 when they had a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand Bitcoin that was only worth three cents. Let's go. Guess what? Yeah, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Is that, oh, shit. Okay. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I can see yo. Anyways, so, um, so yeah, so listen, it's time. And, uh, yeah, they're going to look for that. And either way, I'm still, I'm going down to Miami. I don't know if anybody else is coming down. Actually, you coming down? No, but we're going down to Miami. And I'm going to be shilling Rick Ross Web 3. So let's go. I, I don't know about anybody else. Let's do it. Hello, FOMO. No, we're definitely not coming, but... Yeah, I agree. This is pretty sick, you guys. I love this intersection we've created in Web3 where finance world meets art, culture, and, you know, just giving artists financial and creative freedom. But I've always said, you know, whatever brings interest to a network, to a platform is valuable. And I think NFTs did just that for crypto. A lot of people that I speak to never even touched crypto before NFTs. So I love the interest and the, you know, the all the different dimensions that it brings to this world that we love. But I think that's it for us. That's a wrap.